Okay, let us now go into deductive logic. Deductive logic is as I said going from the general to the particular. So, in order to apply deductive logic you have to have the general premise in hand and then you have to look at a particular situation and try to infer the fact that will be applicable to that particular situation based on the general premise that is already available. That is the, the, the structure of the deductive logic. And uh, it was uh, the main work on deductive logic was done by Aristotle quite long back and I will uh, talk about that. He actually structured the ways of doing deductive logic, but after that later logicians also contributed to that knowledge and finally, we have a reasonably uh, structured uh, situation in application of deductive logic. So, let us take the situation that uh, I have already uh, written this particular uh, inductive inference if copper is dipped in vinegar then it turns green. So, notice the structure if then, if something happens then something else happens that is the structure. If an animal is an insect then it has six legs. So, uh, so on and so forth you can uh, phrase everything in that if then form. And then this is a general premise that is available to you and then you are considering situation that I have a beaker of uh, vinegar and I have a piece of copper in my hand. If I dip, if I dip this particular copper in the vinegar then what will happen? So, then a particular copper is di dipped in the vinegar and the you extract the conclusion that it will turn green a particular situation from the general to the particular. So, a, a, a particular a particular piece of copper is dipped in vinegar, it will turn green. This line of argument may seem obvious simple. Now, no, notice let us again dissect the way we are actually arguing in our minds. The statement given is in the form if A then B. A is if A is copper is dipped in vinegar, B is it turns green. Okay. If A then B and then you say A has happened. in a particular way, particular situation and then you say therefore, B is true. Okay. So, this is the line of logic right. Let me block it. This is the line of logic you have followed. Uh, this is definitely a correct way of logical reasoning and in fact, it has a name called modus ponens. This is a logic correct logical structure. If A then B, A is true therefore, B is true. Now, there are situations, uh, I mean if you have to uh, see that this can be applied in all possible situations, but there are situations where you have a situation if A then B. Now, B is true. Is A true? 
So, if A then B is a conclusion that has been arrived at earlier by the application of inductive logic. Now, in a particular situation you see B is true. For example, you have seen that a piece of copper has turned green, is green therefore, B is true. Can we infer that it had prior to that been dipped in vinegar? No, we cannot infer that because there can be other ways by which it can turn green and therefore, this argument is a wrong argument. So, if A then B, but if B is true there is no reason to believe that A is true therefore, therefore it is a wrong line of argument. Okay? We have to uh, eliminate that. Uh, let me delete this. Suppose not A is true, that means it was not dipped in vinegar. Can we infer that therefore, uh, therefore not B? Is this true? Apply in that particular situation. If copper is dipped in vinegar, then it turns green. Now, copper was not dipped in vinegar. Therefore, we are trying to in, uh, conclude that no, it will not turn green. Can we, can we infer that? No, we cannot. Again, because there can be other ways by which it can uh, turn green. Somebody may paint it green. So, uh, that, that also is a wrong logical argument. Okay. Notice that what I am showing as wrong are actually logically wrong even though many people use this kind of logical structures these are actually logically wrong. So, this is also logically wrong. Suppose now you have a situation where we can say what has happened is not B. Then can we say that A did not happen? Yes. Not B means it uh, B was it turns green, not B means it did not turn green. Had it been dipped in the vinegar, it would have turned green and therefore, you can conclude that it has not been dipped in vinegar. Therefore, if not B is true, then not A is a possible conclusion. This is a valid reasoning. So, I will again block it. Uh, this is a valid reasoning and it is called modus tollens. Apply to another situation, modus, modus pollens. Uh, if an animal is an insect, it has six legs. I have got an insect, an animal which is an insect and therefore, it will have six legs, true. If an animal is an insect, it will have six legs, not B. I have counted the legs and found that it is not, uh, it does not have six legs. Therefore, we conclude that it is not an insect, it can be a horse. So, it is not an insect, that is a valid reasoning cause called modus tollens. Okay. So, with that we learned uh, two basic structures, very basic structures that are permissible in deductive logic. These are valid logics. Okay. Well, in many situations you have to apply a chain of reasoning. What I showed just now was a, a single step in the reasoning process, but a chain of reasoning is where one conclusion leads to another conclusion leads to another conclusion so on and so forth. For example, if you are using modus tollens, uh, your line of argument is something like this. If A then B, uh, 
uh, and not b this led to the conclusion that uh, not a okay and then this conclusion that that can be added to another uh, particular premise and leading to another conclusion and so on and so forth so the uh, situation may be that there is a uh, premise 1 and so this was premise 1 and premise 2 leading to premise 3 okay premise 1 and premise 2 leading to premise 3 and then uh, that can also lead to i mean okay uh, let me put it this way that and premise 3 and premise 4 all that put together gives a conclusion final conclusion so which means that so far we have learned only a step but now a a series of deductions can be made and how do we actually do that we actually do that by by inferring step by step p1 and p2 which is premise 1 premise 2 something like this leading to uh, conclusion 1 and then conclusion 1 and premise 3 leads to conclusion 2 and so on and so forth it goes on and finally uh, the the n minus 1th conclusion conclusion n minus 1 and premise number n uh, finally gives conclusion the nth conclusion or you can say the final conclusion so you see you started with a few premises and ultimately you were able to reach a conclusion but in that case each step has to be justified has to be valid reasoning and there are two ways of valid uh, reasoning that i just uh, enumerated one is modus polens another is modus tollens and then uh, using this you can have you can make a series of such deductions finally arriving at something that is uh, valid for example uh, we know that if you cut trees then it leads to climate change now this, this this logical connection is very long if you cut trees then light can go right up to the ground okay so you have cut trees and there is light light goes right up to the ground conclusion number 1 then uh, light falling on the ground hits the the ground and hits the air uh, in contact with the ground and therefore air rises therefore the starting from the first one you come to the conclusion at that stage that it will result in the air uh, going up when air goes up it moves away it drives away the cloud that are there in the upper atmosphere so it, it will reduce rain so on and so forth you can you can each step will lead to a second step and third step and so on and so forth each step will lead to a conclusion that conclusion plus something else will lead to something more and finally you will it will lead you to the conclusion that if you cut the trees it will cause climate change so we do apply this kind of reasoning uh, in science and therefore it has to be learned properly.